tonight we are very fortunate to be here with a group of guys collectively known as Rags. Yeah, we are. We'll be having a conversation with them, and then they will be playing a set of music for us. So welcome to the program. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, Let's get uh, name and voice recognition and go. My name's Jordi Rosales. This is my voice. (laughs) <laughs> my name is Zachariah Garn. This is my voice. Maybe a little closer to the mic. Uh, my name's Zachariah Garn. <laughs> Check. Check. Step into the microphone. Step into the mic. Uh, Travis Hendricks is my name. <laughs> my name is Charlie Davenport. How wonderful. And your name? Yeah, I'm Tom. Oh, great. And, uh, and I'm Jim. How yeah. fascinating Far stuff. <laughs> A lot of people don't know this about the show, but we actually record the performance before we do the interview. Shh. Not that I like to pull the curtain back because uh, uh, what's magic is real and oops, what's real is magic, is as my good friend Tom Gaffey yeah, says. Yeah, absolutely. But Tom yeah, was right. watching the show, and he took me aside afterwards, and he had some something to say about it, and I'd like you to share it with us. While you guys were playing, uh, out of the side of my eyes, there over, I was sitting on one of the ramps watching you play, and just out of the corner of my eye, I saw the little flash, and uh, boom. Whoa, felt this really cold swish go by, and I can hardly wait to see if anything comes by on on the... You always hear about maybe orbs and stuff like that. I don't know. Really? Uh, Whoa, the equipment's been acting orbs. up. Uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, cameras went down, and uh, yeah, if, if we were ever haunted at a time of one of our videos, this would have been the time. You, you're what feeling that honor, right now? I was, yeah, a while ago, yes, absolutely. We were, we were being visited. If, if I had to guess, that's what a visit felt like, and we, I've had a couple times like that. That would have been one of them. Perhaps you would call their performance a spiritual experience. Spiritual. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in God? Go. I believe in ghosts, and I believe in God. In fact, we have a song called I Believe in God. But it's kind of about not believing in God. So I do and I don't. Give us an example of a lyric from a song like that. Um, it, it, well, it's about, I, was, I used to study physics in college. Wow. And when I was like uh, 18, and I was also, yeah, I was just, I, I was studying physics and mostly like. What were you going to say before you stopped talking? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I was also really high a lot too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> that that doesn't happen a lot with music. yes. <laughs> I was I was really high. It was sort of like it was a thing where I would get high and then I would be like really in the world of physics. Yeah. Do you feel you like know? you actually learn during that? Tom, do you think that a person could learn in that condition? Oh, uh, I really don't. <laughs> so we've heard not, not from personal experience, I and, am not and also on stage with Jim and Tom, as well as the Phoenix Theater, does not in any way condone <laughs> drug use. <laughs> no, no, we do not. We do not. Well, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It was. I mean, I I don't remember a whole lot. Like I, I mean, if I was, well, there's it's, your answer. It's it's in there. It's I know it's in there somewhere. And if I was to like revisit that whole world of physics, it would it would probably come back to me pretty quick. Yeah. But um, I believe in God was the name of the song, and it was kind of about um, it was just about feeling really like the world wasn't really solid. Like I I don't know in the experience of learning physics or is something that is kind of like, like it's sort of like thought expanding and it changes the way that you th- like, you're just existing in the world. Like I'm like looking at this table. I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't like my whole life. I've thought that this is a, like a solid thing, but it's actually just made up of like, molecules and electrons and stuff like that, that are interacting. And it's actually like, there's more space in between the little tiny particles than there is actual particles. And so my and when I was learning that when I was 18, it was kind of like, it was kind of like tearing my like view of the world apart. And I was like, wait a minute. So nothing is really solid. And that information became super real to me, which is also a big theme in a lot of our lyrics as well is about information becoming like that experience of like, you can learn something like I can learn, like I'm going to die one day. Like I know that and that's like a fact that I know, but I don't really like experience that knowledge very often. Like it's very rare that I'm like, holy shit. Like I'm like in that fact. So that's actually a theme of a lot of our lyrics too, is like that experience of being really in information and sort of like how sometimes you can be like, yeah, you know, like the world is fucked, but we're just hanging out. But then other times you can be like, God damn it. The world is fucked. And it's like all around you. You just brought me back to, um, Ninth grade, uh, Tom Gaffey. My brother had an underground newspaper when he was a senior in high school, at Petaluma High School. And uh, the last issue they produced, and I still have a copy of it, I think, Al Seastrand, one of his friends, who I held in high regard and still do. I don't know if you're out there, Al. He wrote, uh, my brother said, you write the letter. Anything you write, if you sign it, we'll print it. And so Al sent in a little letter that said, this school is fucked, but I'm out in June. 
<laughs> and, uh, that's kind of like a, a mantra for life. Yeah, this life is fucked, but you know, I'm out in June. And when I do it again, I'm going to come back when there's better skateboards than I had when I was a kid. So I'm not worried about it. But anyway, <laughs> you brought me back to ninth grade uh, Tom that's Gaffey some there. wisdom. <laughs> Tom believes he will be re- reincarnated and that he will find a town by a watering hole. I, I would like to have a swimming hole on the river that I'm living on next time. I love Petaluma. And I really I could do it again, but I really think I'd like to experience a town that has a swimming hole on the river totally. and better skateboards than I had when I was a kid. And, oh, man, that would be heaven. How so. certain are you of that happening? I'm pretty certain. Yeah. I got to deal with God. God's up there going, no, man, we didn't make that deal. I know you didn't. Don't worry. I got an idea. I'll talk to you about it when I get there. I think it's going to work. You're going to like it. Trust me. Uh, Does anybody else disagree with him? What do you think happens when you die? You might be the swimming hole. I could do that for a while. Um, I have a story about a tree, uh, a guy turning into a tree. That uh, is it a poem about? No, it's it's a story about an, an old Indian that was the Indian that did not live according to the, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, well it was about a Pomo Indian actually living on the Gualala River, and probably 500 years ago, and a certain family of the Pomos, as I had been told, the Latkuptas, uh, would spend their winters uh, up along the Wheatfield River, and then when the weather got better, they'd come down and they'd live along the coast. And they were the mystics. And uh, there was one Latkupta who did not follow that. Uh, the families would go back up for the winter and, and hide inland a little bit. He would stay down there in the dark, cold forest. <laughs> and uh, when they would move down and come down and, and hang out by the ocean during the summer, he'd move farther away and not be close to them. Uh, there are rules when you're living uh, a life that follows nature and the seasons there are rules of what to fish how to fish when to fish what to plant what to eat when to eat and all of these rules Uh, and this is the best way to say stay healthy and keep your family healthy and and stay warm Uh, he wouldn't follow any of those rules and they all thought he was kind of nuts well there was this drought that had happened and when droughts happen on small rivers, in, uh, like the Gualala in particular, the mouth doesn't open. Uh, not enough water coming down to open the mouth. And when that doesn't happen, uh, the steelhead can't come back upstream to repopulate. And it had happened. There had been a drought, and the fish had not been getting upstream for a couple of years. And uh, one of the elders of the uh, Latkupta tribe was down on the coast, and he was speaking with one of the elders uh, of the uh, steelhead. And she was saying, look, I got to get up. We've got we've to repopulate. If you can get me over this, this uh, sandbar, I will swim upstream and repopulate. And uh, the elder of the, of the lad Coop said, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that. So he lifted her out of the ocean and he brought her into the mouth of the river and he placed her in. And she went up to, sh- she started swimming upstream to, uh, to repopulate. Son of a gun if she didn't get caught by the old uh, Indian that had been living by himself. Damn it. <clears throat> and she said, no, no, no. Don't, 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 don't. If you will let me go, I'm going to go up and, and, and be the mother of all the fish and, and I'll lay some eggs. No, you're going to be my dinner tonight and I'm going to eat you instead. Well, the other elder saw this all going down and he attacked the old, the old man and uh, killed him and buried him uh, along the river. And then all of a sudden one morning or one, yeah, it was probably morning, the old guy wakes up and he stretches his branches out and and, uh, he kind of feels the wind blowing through his branches and he, wow, this is, this is weird. (laughs) The heck is this? I can't move. I can't like, whoa, I'm a tree. Son of a gun. And he had grown to be, when the, when the elder of the Latkuptas buried him, he said, you know what? You have never figured out how this world works. You have never gone the way it needs to go. You do everything so counter to the way nature wants to flow. You will stay here in this world, on this spot, until you learn this lesson. Son of a gun, if he didn't grow up to be this big uh, redwood tree because the redwood trees were growing up there in those days. And uh, year after year, he watched the, uh, he watched the river. He'd watch the Latkuptas come up and down. He'd watch people, because all the Pomos and all the Miwoks were walking along the trail along the coast, and he'd watch all those families. He'd feel the squirrels and the birds playing in his branches and living in the branches, and he'd see how their families were working, and he'd see the eggs, and he'd see the birds, and he'd see the fish, and he'd see the otter in the river. And, uh, and something else he learned was he could feel the earth 
always moving, always moving, moving through space, moving around the sun. He could see it moving around the sun. He could feel it spinning. He could see day turn to night, night turn to day. And he learned how the cycles of the planet worked. And I met this tree when the tree was just a stump. And uh, finally he got it. And I know he got it because <laughs> we discussed that, which I'm not going to mention. But I was uh, laying along the banks of the Guadalajara River one day, and I was having a conversation with this tree stump, and he told me this story. And that was his story. And this is how he learned about how the seasons and the planet and all of the systems of the earth works. And he had to become a redwood tree to do that. Yeah. I don't even remember how we got to that story. So to, be, to be clear, you learned that story from the tree. The tree told me that story, yes. Wow. Okay. Um, the story kind of seems like, uh, it seems to be encouraging conformity a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. As a matter of fact, there's nothing wrong with conformity necessarily. You can always be the individual you need to be. But if you want to, and we're finding that we're not living with the seasons of our planet right now, and I don't know if man's going to be able to keep this up for too much longer. We know what we can burn, when we can burn, what we should burn. We know what we can eat, when we can eat, what we should eat. Uh, we know all of these things yet. And what's also true, and we're forgetting that, I think we know when to live. And I think we know when to die. But God only knows we might be able to live. They're, they're talking about rebuilding uh, all the body parts. If you can keep your head together, uh, you might be able to live forever. And what would that be like? I don't think I'd like to do that. So, yeah, there's, there's going to be conformity whether you like it or not. Uh, right now in my life, I'm 60 years old. I'm going to die. And that's conformity, and you can't stop that. But, <laughs> again, i got to deal with God. So, quite frankly, I'm coming back to do it again because I want to <laughs> skate. So I would think that maybe 16-year-old Tom Gaffey didn't know he was going to die. Or if he did, he didn't really pay too much mind to it. Uh, no, I... Yeah, in those days, I wasn't thinking much about that. That's interesting. Okay, so he just gave you like five minutes of stuff wow. to think about. Yeah. It, just please jump in. Whatever yep. came to mind during that story, we just would love to hear it. I got something here. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Petaluma. I was a little one here. And we came to the Phoenix after school every day, Far almost out. like animals going to the watering hole. Yeah. You know, we'd come crawling out of the den. And I'll be damned if I wouldn't say Tom already became the watering hole in our childhood <laughs> kind holy of, yeah. shit i might even we, say we don't have a this is hole, this is it this could be uh, it what do you think about that tom i want to swim next time though <laughs> no look i uh, this has been such a gift for me to have the phoenix it was uh so i discovered it when i was about 13 danny Takini's uh family had bought it and, and uh, i think the second or third day they had the building we we came in uh, uh and checked the building out and when we opened up uh the tower uh, there's a little hatch that takes you up into this tower right behind us. And I remember looking at this wooden ladder going up into this darkness. And that's when I realized, oh, my God, I want to be here. <laughs> Absolutely want to be here. A couple of years after that, uh, I sat on the apron of this stage and prayed to God, Father, I want to come back and run this place. I really want to run this place. But here's what I learned. Actually, I didn't get the language until I started doing rock and roll. When you have a deal with God, you need a writer. Because, honest to God, I meant as a movie theater. That's all I wanted to do with this place. It was a movie theater when I was a kid. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. We got a new movie every Wednesday, a double feature. And that's all I wanted to do was show <laughs> movies here and eat popcorn and drink bad sodas. And I would have been a happy guy. Unfortunately, I did not get a writer. I did get to come back and run this place. However, this is not at all what I had in mind. Yeah, Thank God, because this is a lot better, I think. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it any other way. A, a rare case where poor communication actually yes. worked out okay. <laughs> poor communication. You, it you, can you, work out well. You told the guy or girl what you wanted, yes. but you weren't specific about it, yeah. so it kind of went whenever. Yeah, that's what we got. Was, you get what you get. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Charlie Davenport, you had mentioned to me before the show you had some questions for Tom and I. Uh, what would you like to know? <laughs> um, have you guys ever made out before? Ooh. Tom and I? Yeah. No, uh, you know, I have touch aversion issues. I, I really do. Uh, <laughs> I probably ha I've probably hugged Tom like three or four times, yeah. and it's usually only in heavy, big, or particularly momentous occasions. Yeah, it's like hug time. Yeah. Going I'm down. getting better at that. It, uh, it took a couple of years. Just in the last few years, I've gotten better about hugs. But you know what? 
the reason I think I'm so touch aversion is because I had to grow up in those days when Gestalt and all of a sudden these big huggy circles. It was the group hug that finally turned me off to the whole. <laughs> no, no, I the can't group hug ruined do the this. whole thing. Can't do it. Yeah, it's just. Uh, uh, so uh, totally. have you have you made out with any of the people at this table? <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny yeah. Funny yeah. It's really funny you mentioned. This is that, one of actually. Charlie's favorite topics. Okay. Yeah. Well, please let, let's go deep. <laughs> he brings it. Up. Let's go deep into it. Well, I can is. give you a full history. Okay. It's of, like of a what? history of making out with, with the four of us. Okay. Sweet. Sure. Okay, and it starts with me and Zach. Okay. So it goes back. Just to so you know, just so you know, I already know that this is going to be a winner segment that's not going to get cut. Unless you're bullshitting, then it will get cut. No, 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 no. Okay. This is I'm. I'm a very honest man. Jay. Please, thank you. Me From as well. one honest man to another honest okay. man. Did you guys shave? What? Did you shave? First? I shave um, I mean, before, before yeah. you make out. Oh, before we make out. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Why would you do that? That's the best part. I don't know. I Tom, can't. like the gristle on the chicken. Tom, obviously you've never made out with a man. Go ahead. No, okay. <laughs> so 15 years old, Zach really wanted to kiss me and I wasn't ready to kiss a boy yet. Yeah. So I wasn't going to do it. I was it. into exploring. Yeah. Zach is really into exploring. Like places and people and... Mouths. Orifices. Back on track. <laughs> Mostly mouths. Um, and then he tried to kiss me a few times, and and I I said no and um, set that boundary pretty well. Mm-hmm. And then we did. Nope. No. And, and you, <laughs> nope. And then you didn't. got really drunk at a party and made out with another guy, oh. and then it got back to me through the gamut <laughs> around the circle, and all of a sudden this wow. funny joke thing was like, my friend doesn't like me very much anymore. <laughs> this is high school. This is awkward. Like, should we talk about oh this? I probably shouldn't talk about this. <laughs> it got awkward because you didn't make it. He didn't. And then he chose some other guy over me. And also, it wasn't a sexual thing until I got chosen. Yeah, like, I was yeah. the second dog, you know? Uh-huh. And then it was like, then it was, yeah, we had some talks. But we did. We, we did. I, well, Wait, why'd you make out with the other guy? He was and drunk. who was that? Well, <laughs> it was it was it was it was it was tricky. You don't uh, need to tell us who it was. Well, well, no, 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 no. Yeah, you should definitely tell unless us who it was. I don't want know. To. <laughs> it was like, uh, is he local? Oh my god, <laughs> is, he, <laughs> is he cuter than him? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, I'm I'm incredibly physically attracted to Zach. Yeah, See, and he's yeah. a good looking guy. I'm, I'm incredibly attra- physically attracted to all four of these. See, he didn't want to make dudes. out with you four until he was dudes. sure he could pull Life. it off and not be embarrassing. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a nice way of looking yeah, at yeah. it. You're like well, stacking up. It was one of those. Working towards do you really want to know what happened? Sweet. Yeah, I would. Okay, okay. Yeah, I would like to know. Oh, you want to you want to know things now because we're on the air. I get it. Whatever. And it's you know it's it's open season, so you know you share things with us we'll share things with you totally so it was, okay. it was just one of those I mean, we're talking about like high school laws. this is weird yeah we just started right. digging right into high school well, you brought it I up like, i wouldn't okay, even know i had a crush on this girl and i and then she had a birthday party and there was this other guy there and then she was making out with her girlfriend or her late her, her friend who was a girl and then i was and then i was like i'm gonna make out with this guy then and then just to you know, it's like you're yeah, in the it's zone like this. And this is like, like totally, totally doesn't make sense on paper, but for some reason it feels like it's going to get me we, closer to my goal. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, then, then, then we all made out, and yeah. it was great. So <laughs> mission accomplished. That's Boom. what happened. <laughs> hey, then you should not be jealous about that. Yeah, it was a means to an end. No, I still am. I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. take that lightly. Yeah. No. But we did. We did eventually. Okay. Recently. Well. Okay. So <laughs> years. we can fast forward. So the history kind of stops there for about five years, and then we started filming a music video last week. I did. And oh this God. thing, po- this thing popped in my head. Um, I was like, I, I was in a sauna, and then I did a cold plunge, which is like a trippy thing to do because, yeah. like, you're kind of like your blood kind of slows down, and you can get into sort of a meditative Apparently space. That's a little dangerous. So I'm closing my eyes, and then all of a sudden, I just see like me and Zach making out, but like side profile and really slowly. And I was like, that's what's because I was thinking in about a the tight music shot. video, what it would be. Yeah, like really close side profile, really slow, really intimate. Tom's Tom's seeing the scene. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting. <laughs> you seen it? See okay, cool, cool. <laughs> so then we filmed the music video, and me and Zach make out, Zach and, and we I. had to do it really. What? Zach and I. Z- me and you made out. <laughs> there you go. Right. In long exposure. In long exposure oh, yeah. shots. Oh, pull back. So That's we had good, to yeah, yeah. we had to do it really slowly to get this like. Okay, can I fun. clarify a couple things? Yeah, on of that? course you can. Yeah. Go for it. It, first of all, it didn't have to be slow motion because it was long exposure. 
<laughs> no, I, I just want to make that clear <laughs> because have. you could have just gone normal speed and he would have cut it in such a way it would have worked. Oh, how fascinating. So the kiss uh, was actually done in slow motion. It yeah, was. Yeah. I was under yeah. the yeah, impression yeah, so that we, it was real time. Yeah, like okay. the speed at which we went would be the speed it, at which the film would be it, showing. That's how it was. <laughs> well, the thing with long exposure is that if you go too fast and it gets really blurry, I wanted people to see everything. Mm-hmm. They did. Yeah, they did. Everything. Okay, one other clarification. Okay, cool. When you pitched the idea to us, you said we were going to really quickly kiss each other on the cheeks. And it was going to be like a flashing sequence yeah, yeah. of us interchanged kissing each other. And then the camera's shooting and they're making out in slow motion. Yeah. It, it escalated, Things though. Things escalate. You know, one thing, the classic phrase, one, one thing, thing led to another. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really and true. Then, and then Jordy and Travis, I peer pressured them into doing it. And so they did. So now we have... All that on on camera, so coming out soon. That yeah. 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 you, yeah. you just it. very and perhaps the most masterfully ever hyped something on this program. <laughs> How could somebody not want to go and watch that you know, video but, now? But, <laughs> right, <laughs> that's the Let's idea. The clip right there. <laughs> what, what is the name of the tune? It's called Peace Together. So that was a really wonderful story. Thank you. Did you like that one? I did. Sure. Okay, cool. Um, now, is that the extent of the in-group kissing that we have here? I think so. I oh know. no! You know what? We we had a tour uh, when Rags oh, was just the three yes. of us, and we That's took a, good a tour up. To the this was the Kiss and Tell tour. It was for you. Good good for, for you. Old, for you. Yeah, you know. That would be a good. L's that would be a good good title for a tour. But anyway, <laughs> we were taking a trip up the northwest northwest coast, and we had stopped in Olympia, and we played at some little neighborhood art festival, uh-huh. and we played a house show, and everything went really well, and we had all our beers in the truck, and we were mm-hmm. nursing those very delicately and spacing I remember them out. Not, not driving. Park, not driving. Very, yeah, parts, yeah. parked cars. No, it was, it was a walk around the neighborhood. We had a place to stay, totally responsible. Yeah. Uh, bottle of whiskey, some good beers, we're pacing them. I went back to the car, and all the beers were gone all of a sudden, and it was only like 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night, and we, we had a good buzz on going, but it, like all the beers were gone. So I came back and accosted the fellas about this tragic turn of events, <laughs> And it turned out that Travis had the only beer left, and it was full. And for some reason, he thought that the obvious response to me saying, hey, we're out of beers, is you want a beer? Here's a beer. And so he (laughs) threw the beer at me and hit me in the head. And that... uh, made me so inclined as to tackle him and fight him to the ground. And I won because I was, you know, aggravated wait, and wait, in did, pain. Did the bottle break? Oh, no, it, it was, was just like a PBR. Oh, just to yeah. clarify, oh. it wasn't full. It had, a, you okay. know, oh, dregs in it. Boo. Maybe that was worse. <laughs> and, the, and the way that I remember worse. it, because... <laughs> well, I haven't even gotten to the kissing part. Well, well wait, 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 I just want to clarify one thing because I think it's really golden and it shines in my memory as this golden moment. Please. When Zach came up, he was like, where's my fucking beer? And Travis was like, I got your beer right here, bitch. And, <laughs> and he crushed the can, he threw it at his face. To bring it all around, back to the main point, is once once I had pinned Travis, I realized that I'm obviously not going to hurt him. Like, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. And so you're not going to get a beer out of me. I, and the beer's already gone. I don't want him to puke on me or anything like that. And so I... A, Stopped the, aggr- aggr- the aggression and went for the affection. So I kissed him. Right and, how did, and how did you feel about <laughs> it? it? It still felt like aggression. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been a fan of the kiss that's too aggressive. <laughs> uh, I, 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 truly. No, that's real. The teeth I, you are know never what? a fun thing to find. You know, sometimes they're just like, what are you, you're mauling the face here, you know? This is supposed to be a nice moment between two or possibly three people. And uh, it's just like, Jesus Christ, take it easy. Anyway. Um, Charlie, do you have any other questions for us? I feel like we really hit gold with the uh, the man on man kissing. Oh but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, I, that's. I just wanted to set it high, you know. Not Her- really the nature of Tom and I's relationship. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, there's still room for growth. Missed yeah. opportunity. Okay. Someday, yeah. you could have a history like the four of us do. Absolutely. See? It's something you know? that we can aspire to. We'll take and it like, on the if road. you let me just, yeah. if you want someone to watch your video, yeah, just make out. Yeah, <laughs> just do it. People yep. will watch your video, you guys. If you want to see that kiss, you're gonna have to watch the video. <laughs> That's the line. That's the line. Well, we are filming. That's this. I don't think I turn that off. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. <laughs> dude, I, would, I would never kiss Jim, dude. Why not? Really? That's now that's <laughs> now that is a conversational well that I would like to explore. <laughs> well, we have all night. <laughs> well, it's, it's the eyes that this you gave him. This is very him. fascinating. Yeah, yeah. You no. know, why would you not kiss Jim ever? You're Italian. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm very curious about this. Come on. T- why would you not kiss me? Um, it was the way that you you looked at him. Ah, it was very like this. You were gonna like 
you, it was it was it was it was aggressive. a little, it was a little aggressive, aggressive kiss. kissing. Aggressive you know, you know, I have just gone kissing. on record and say said that I don't you like don't, aggressive don't kissing. Like aggressive you're right, you're right, right. Sometimes you you don't like the things and other people Sometimes that you see the most the in yourself. Sometimes the things we hate in others, right? Yeah, it comes out. Talking about. Well, Charlie, we were in a taqueria together uh, six months ago. Thank you. And um, was there kissing by the salsa? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what happened. Uh, you were going through an emotional event at that time, and uh, Charlie's like, always going through. Yeah, an emotional what, event. but specifically, what was happening at that time? See, I'm always going through an emotional event. So Me and Charlie live to re- together. Yeah, majority and I live together in a house. Would you say there's a lot of um, drama with Charlie? Every day, and then so he would be the top, and then would you say that you're the least uh, dramatic in the group? Oh, I've I've got drama too, but Charlie likes to get a lot of uh, cranial sacral therapy done. Oh my god, yeah, that's <laughs> real. Oh, what does that mean? Well, I I could explain it, or Charlie could tell us about the depth that he enters his physical and emotional spiritual self. Let's get that word again. Uh, cranial cranial sacral. Have you heard this term before, Tom? Yes. Okay, I have not. I would love to know about it. Oh, it's all the rage. Yeah. But before we get into it, I'll just say that it's a full process, and even after the day that you do it, there's this unwinding that takes place in the next few days. And if you can have a person there to really just give it all to... (laughs) uh, Unwind on? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so that that's my role. Okay, and that's an unpaid position. I I just want to make it really clear that we function in that role for each other very very well. So we do that. But so well, we'll get to his problems in a second. Tell us about uh, craniosacral therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I heard that gurgly giggle <laughs> through happens. the arrowhead water. Yeah. Um. So cranial sacral therapy um is a form of body work. I'm actually a body worker, and that would be one of the things that. Um, when we were talking about earlier things that like in your life, you're like, Oh man, this is kind of what I want to do right now. Music is a big one for me. That's come up like dozens and dozens of times over the last like 10 years where I've been like, Oh yeah, music is the thing. And I'll maybe forget about it for a little bit and come back to it. But body work and like, and, and that whole, that whole thing is another one that I kind of hit on last year, or I guess it's almost been two years now where I was like, Oh yeah, this is the thing that I, I want to do. So cranial sacral therapy is pretty trippy because it's, it's really, I don't know, it's really subtle and I don't know, it, it's hard to explain. Well, we want to know. What is it? I'm getting what to is it. it? I'm getting to it. Okay, okay. So remember, there's a l- beginning, middle, end. Yeah, okay. purpose. <laughs> beginning, cranial sacral therapy. Middle, my mom lives in Mount Shasta. Oh, with the Lumerians. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. I've seen the Lumerians before. Okay. They're very scary. Boy, there's a lot of there things we've got to define for the audience. Oh, okay. First of audience. all, <laughs> shell the Lumerians for a moment. What is cranial sacral therapy? Okay. Cranial sacral therapy is a form of body work where you work on the cranial sacral fluid. You can't use a word to define a word. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So cranial, well, cranial. Let's, just treat, <laughs> let's just treat, let's say, okay, so, and I'm, I'm not really an expert on this, so it's, I, I feel kind of, I feel kind of apprehensive to explain it because I know there's people out there that understand mm-hmm. cranial sacral therapy a lot more than I do. They're like, oh, he's bullshit. Are you right getting now. a massage while someone is talking to you about your problems? No. Okay, well, that is what you're leading me to believe before. I, 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 I so don't know what So this is what happens. Okay. So I'm basically... <laughs> We've talking about this for five somebody, minutes. I have no idea what it <laughs> yeah, is. Thank you. Oh, it's like so, a fancy wait, that's, the thing. So, yeah. that's the thing about it, though. Any, no if you ask any somatic what therapist what somatic therapy is, you will end up with this conversation that we're having yeah, right but now. But it will cost you $150 for it'll co- it'll well, hold most on. You seem to know what it is. Is it happening to I always thought, tell it us in one I thought it was deep tissue massage more. No, okay, okay. So I <laughs> lay on a bed and this woman just like kind of touches like my head or my feet like very lightly. Good. We're getting somewhere. And very, very, very lovingly. And I sit, I lay there and I meditate. I try to just get in the zone. And then there's sort of like tectonic shifts that go down like way, <laughs> way. <laughs> Tom and I are totally on a level right are now. Sure tectonic is the I word. Get it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Tectonic. So it's like I almost imagine like okay. So reality, me, my senses is like the surface of a lake, and then underneath all that is this like is this body of water that is, 
you know, this the thing. I, it's constantly kind of like, churning. It's constantly moving, and I don't really have a whole lot of like conscious access to it. Yeah. But I can feel the effects of when there's like big movements and there's things going on there up on my my surface. And sometimes it's like hard to know why it is that I'm feeling really emotional. But then I'm just kind of like, okay, well, it's just something going on down there that I don't really understand. So it's like. I'm changing, we're all changing and we don't really know it, but then things kind of come up and we have these experiences that are like emotional that are kind of like reflective of the deep things that are happening. So cranial sacral therapy is like, it's, it's, it's like that basically. So it's just like moving things down. Well, in the, you lost by, me with that last sentence. By touching. So, so, but I understand now physically what it is. Uh, yeah. you're laying in a place, you're trying to meditate. Someone is doing something to your head or whatever parts of your body. Yeah. And you are feeling things throughout your body, perhaps little, this little, that it's just something's happening, but you can't explain it's why kind it's of happening. Like creating electronic conduits in throughout your body. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Have you had it done to you, Tom Gaffey? Um, yeah, <laughs> actually, weirdly enough. Yes. Not weird at all. We're no, very but you know what? It, and here's the problem. Well, yeah, and it did. Uh, this just, part just probably us, can't Tom. go on. Just I was on LSD us. at the time. Uh, totally, yes. totally. <laughs> it really works. It sounds great. It's it really, really phenomenal. Works. I could see the. Con- I could see it actually. I didn't realize that was the cranial sacral part. Uh, you could you could feel and so, boy, and it's so easy to do with other people if you can just kind of move along their their body. Uh, and just feel points where you want to just kind of like touch the energy right there and then kind of move it along just a little bit and slide it over to, ooh, right about. Oh, this is good. That's there. I feel like I'm having one so, right now. Yeah, right. But that's the way it works for me anyway. And you just kind of start feeling all these connections that are not quite going anywhere. Like, What's this? And this is what this therapy does. Yeah. It helps you, what, what like yeah, level out this stuff? More or, with or have a better of an understanding the, of what this yeah, stuff I didn't realize is? That was or cope with the, with the water that is continually churning? I kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like doing things that I don't really understand. Yeah, but yeah, what do you working. feel after you get it done? Wow. Because we understand oh, specifically yeah. someone touching you and you meditating. We get that. What do you feel after? Do you feel cleansed? Do you I feel usually a piece? Fear ex- uh, feel extremely emotional. Okay. For about a week. Which is interesting because I would try to run away from an experience that made me feel super emotional. But then it always kind of rounds out where it's like, it's almost like I have this gate up and I have like all this water, like just in, in of like whatever trying to, that's been trying to come out for a while and we just open up the gates and it just fucking splashes out and it gets everyone around me wet, usually Jordy. So, <laughs> you know what? so, so here's the deal. Uh, and I think what you ought to try afterwards, if you're really trying to release, uh-huh. and this is honest to God, the truth, it's going to cost you maybe $20 or so in bad beer, buy a bunch of forties, <laughs> empty about a quarter of it, put the cap back on and start smashing the bottles. Oh my God. There's something about smashing a bottle, a 40 bottle that just is the All most right. releasing Whoa. thing. Oh my God. I like it's that. Fucking, it's incredible. That sounds awesome. <laughs> it works for me really well. Great and idea. I learned that by smashing people's forties in my back parking lot. I, I love it. When I come across, across upon a crew of kids that shouldn't be drinking back there. Oh my God. Is that a 40? <laughs> so much. Oh my God. Oh, is that God. a 40? It foams. It just, Boom, the glass smashes and wow. releases everywhere. It's a spiritual it, experience. It, it, for me, it is. That's therapy. That. For me, it is. <laughs> yeah, therapy. Really, it was, it's, anyway, I would tell you, if you need release, uh, smashing a few 40s can really uh, help. All right. Find a good piece I, of I will be stocked up next time you disappear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're not emotionally level, Charlie. I'd say I am <laughs> because okay. of these things. He's got a handle on it. Would you say this is an emotionally level man? <laughs> I'd say, for the most part, He's an emotionally level man with bouts of disappearing for days to Mount Shasta. Yeah. Oh, this is where it happens in Mount Shasta. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. fascinating. Yeah. So well, sometimes he'll just be dis- he'll just disappear. He'll and say, you know where he's at. "Hey, I'm going to visit <laughs> Dude, my mother." I got a spot and, for you up there. And then I, I yeah. give him the oh, oh, things are bad, huh? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> and then he disappears for a while. He comes home usually in shock. And we talk and, you know, there are tears and about a week of very volatile. <laughs> volatile. <laughs> volatile this is experience. where the smashing of the 40s really comes in. If there really needs to be a release. And then he gets level. And look at him now. He's, he's He seems so pretty chill. fucking chill right now. Yeah. I feel great. Yeah. Yeah, I feel very great. Yeah, yeah. I want to just, I just want to, the other side of the story here. Let's hear it. This is the last time I went to Mount Shasta. I get home and... I think the day after I got home, 
I had a full day of Secret Cat recording because I also play in a cool. band called Secret Cat and yeah. we were recording drums that day. And it was it was the recording session from hell. It was like one of the worst mm-hmm. things I've ever experienced. It was it was awful. I mean, it turned out really well, but it was it was challenging. What would you say the uh, cause of the greatest level of despair you've had in the last year was? Ouch. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Um, I know the answer, but... <laughs> Jordy knows more about Charlie than Jordy. Would you, would, would, would you care to help the man with this? Uh, I think I think probably in the last year, uh, last summer was pretty brutal. Yeah, I was feeling not stoked. I was I was kind of like I dropped out of school. Um, I hadn't like I had been going to college for about four or five years, and I finally decided to stop going, and then I like quit my job. And so I had this summer where I was like kind of in limbo with that. And it was just, it was really challenging. And then we started recording the rags album and that was really cool, but it was also like four or five days a week, five hours a day, kind of like being inside, like recording this thing and all the sort of like, it was my first big recording project. So all the like insecurities of like recording. Where, where were you guys recording? Up. We were calling, uh, recording in Petaluma with Paul and Naveed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The creators of the... On stage with Jim and Tom theme. Yeah, Jim and Tom theme. So this was all happening at the same time? My yeah. God. So it was, it was just happening at the same time, and I was like... It, it, it was a lot. I was just... I was feeling very emotional. I had a, a lot of different things going on. So. Well, of course, that is not... Um, that is way too vague for the program, of course. Can I make a connection here? Yeah, please. Would the, you? F- the, like... 20 minutes ago, you started this conversation asking him about why he was sad at a Mexican food restaurant yeah, yeah. that you were both at. And I think you were just trying to get back to that topic by bringing this all up. Yeah. And so maybe I'm just going to come out and put this all yeah, on yeah. the Jordy's table. Yeah, yeah. Jordy's got would the you, info. Would you do it, Jordy? Please, Jordy's thank beating you. around the bush. For why, <laughs> why were you sad at the taqueria, Charlie? It was, it was just like everything was falling apart. It just yeah. felt like everything was falling apart. I've had a few times in my life where I felt like zero, where I felt like there I had nothing I had, like my all my me- momentum was just sort of crushed you had was, nothing you were nothing you would become nothing yeah, this is what you felt totally just like that like I just felt like a zero yeah that's what always pops in my head is like man I feel like wow. a zero right now like yeah. no like just n- not having like a job and like not like doing anything and like in this culture it's really difficult to like do that that's why the grading process is so insidious the grading, like in grading. school? Yeah, school? No, yeah because like, you, yeah. you have been trained to just be like, I'm a zero. I'm yeah. a zero out of 100. Yeah. Oh. I'm yeah. getting like an F right how now. How insidious that cycle is. Continue. Yeah. It was totally in my brain. So yeah. that was that was, that was was how I felt during the summer. And like the, th- the thing that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then so then we started recording and things got better. And, and that, that's, that's always been there, like the music. And Zach and I were playing... Last summer we played like four days a week, like five hours a day writing the last few songs for this record. And we got really Beautiful. dialed in and that was cool. Well, you know, in life we, uh, we bring people down so we can bring them back up. That's and right. I would just like to say who writes the songs for this band? I write them primarily. Well, Charlie we watched you play uh, a set yeah. of music, which the audience will hear later, and it was absolutely beautiful. Oh, dude, and thank you. And Tom, Tom feels he had a spiritual experience during well, that. Well, he doesn't feel. He did have a spiritual well, experience. Well, we had a little. Yeah, a little bit. Know, it got cold. It, yeah. There was something that blew my, my vision. We brought out some ghosts. So anyway, ghosts. you know, yeah. you, you're, you're making people feel emotional experiences here tonight. And, and what more can you ask for in life than making connections yeah, yeah. with others? Mm-hmm. It's not a bad thing. I'm, yeah. yeah that's, you're not a zero. Thanks, man. You're a no. 10 out of 10. In fact, that's <laughs> like, you <laughs> know what? And, 10, and, too, and, and making the connections, that's very uh, cranial sacral, sacral of, of you. Mm-hmm. Well. No one really knows what that word <laughs> means. <laughs> well, now now you do. <laughs> but, you know, it's just it's just cycles. So it's like, I think it's really important to feel that mm-hmm. every once in a while. Because that, like, really gets you more in touch with what's important and... Do we feel Everything. like he sort of basks though in the drama? You know what I mean? Like he just really small amount. He's small amount. Small small amount. <laughs> he knows that from that place comes his creativity. Yeah. Yeah. So he likes to go back there. Because cool. sometimes he it's helpful it. to process we don't bad stuff. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we don't judge it. That's why actually kind of why we like being around him. We like that shit. Have you <laughs> heard the lyrics of these songs? Would you like to give no, me an example? 
Oh, man. I want to sin right now. I feel so sick, sick, sick. <laughs> That's just, my favorite. Wow. You were choosing I feel some so sick, sick, sick. The shit's on the favorite. pavement, kid. Look it up. That's one I like a lot, too. Yeah. That's a good line. Yeah. When, you, when you wrote the line, uh, I want to sin right now, were you thinking of a particular sin? That song was about feeling pretty bottled up and wanting to just kind of like get crazy and rowdy just fuck something yeah well just <laughs> fuck it real good. I, yeah just fuck something or fuck something up or like stay up all night and throw 40s at yes, the nice phoenix 40s. or yeah, yeah. do whatever what i like about you is you're a very emotional man you're <laughs> but you're also a communicator thank you and some people are very emotional but they shut down mm. you are this rich well of emotion Aww. that is also willing to share that rich well that, I mean, that's that's why we play music with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, I mean, that's well, why we all hang out. Okay, well then, before we get done, you guys just got done recording a full-length album. That's correct. We did. Yes. Yep. Uh, when does that come out? It Charlie? comes out in September or October. We haven't set a date of yet. 2015. If you're an archival listener, yes. <laughs> uh, do you plan on touring or doing anything for a promotional blitz for this thing? We're just. We're doing a music video. We're doing. We're playing a bunch of shows. We're probably going to do our CD release down in San Francisco at the Chapel. So September, October of 2015 is look when for that's going to happen. Look out for that. Look for rags. Look for rags. <laughs> we've covered a lot of things tonight. We've talked about talking trees. We've talked about reincarnation. We've talked about a sort of therapy that no one understands. <laughs> we've, talked about a, we've talked about a band that enjoys kissing one another sometimes. Uh, and we've uh, uh, most importantly talked about Charlie Davenport's emotional state at length. <laughs> uh, anything you'll ever need to know about Charlie Davenport's emotions it's to this so, point, it's here, it's man. been documented. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. So for that reason, I would like to ask Charlie Davenport to just give us, you know, uh, just his thoughts on, uh, on his band, his life, this show, everything to conclude the episode. In three words. There you go, Charlie. Just just give us something. You know, what have cool. you learned so far? You've been on the planet for how many years now? Twenty three. Twenty three. Uh-huh. Okay. There's been some high points. There's been some low points. Yeah. Uh, and everything in between. You must have learned something along the way. Would you like to tell the people about it? Um, I learned so far. What I've learned is that the thing that I value the most is connection with other people and with like the world around me. So. That's kind of like what it comes back to the most. And that's why I, I do what I do. So that's the reason why I play music. And because mm-hmm. at the foundation of it is like the connection that I have between um, my friends here and the music that we play. And you can tell like when you're watching bands, like I can, I can tell like when the, like the connection kind of like it comes out. So when you're watching like a really incredible band, you can see that like yeah. they're, they're feeling really connected. Um, so anyways, yeah, I, that's something I value a lot. Um, I don't know. This band is is special to me, and I've been writing songs for it for about six years. And so this album has been like a culmination of six years of writing and rewriting, and like and just kind of like honing the whole thing. So it's really exciting to kind of like have that recorded and ready to go, and ready to be out in the world. And like at this point, I just don't even really know what it's going to be like when it's out in the world because the music is like so it's so in my in our heads and like it's this thing that we've just like kind of like we've like created and then like recreated a few different times so it's gonna be trippy when it's like oh here you go everybody here's this music so um yeah that's what i've learned and that's what the album's about well thank you guys so much for joining us tonight uh we're we're about to sit and uh and listen and watch you guys play some songs so we're very excited about that actually you know what and and when you do get to watch them you get to see uh, musicians who have been playing together for uh, uh enough time that they do feel comfortable and, and they do connect when they play because that was quite obvious and uh, yeah it's it's a band to go see it really is thanks tom well Glossy thank you guys rides. this thank was you. a lot of fun tonight and we're uh, very excited to watch you play some music now so uh let's uh do a little breakdown and then we'll show the songs perfect thanks Great. for having us beautiful thank you guys so much <laughs>
feeling okay. The premonitions are well underway. And my face is telling a story about an emotion and living it out. Clarity clutching the past. Moment to moment is fast.
Reflecting off of the moon and burning a crescent into the ground
that you had to
just can't stand to see your face Maybe it's me But probably it's you I think this hits you Harder than me 